All right, so welcome back to yet another deck profile. And this time I've actually gone ahead and updated my deck from last time. So last time it was just purely a branded Despia deck that I really loved. Uh, but now it's going to be Beastial branded or branded Beastial as I prefer to call it. And this is going to be still a 45 card build. Uh, and it is going to be uh, still actually quite different from what it was before. So I do think that it does warrant another deck profile. So here we actually go. So let's just get straight into it. I'm going to go ahead and move extra deck inside deck to the side. Okay, so first things first, we are always going to start off with the main deck over here. Uh, so this is going to be more so creative choices. Uh, I haven't really been taking too much advice from pe from others that have been doing deck profiles necessarily because I haven't really come across another build that I really resonate with. Uh, so I just went ahead and made my own. So let me know what you think about this build, of course, and if you have any suggestions of your own. So let us begin, of course, first and foremost with two Cartesias, which I believe is such an amazing card. This card is a a polymerization on her own like you just special summon her or normal summon her and then you can just go ahead and fuse you don't even have to use her necessarily which is pretty awesome blazing cartesia is incredibly useful and she's also a level four tuner and i know that some people are actually playing baron de fleur uh as a result however i haven't made room for him in my extra deck so far uh so i actually am not playing baron at the moment i pretty much only exclusively use her for fusing and and she has been incredible at just that. And now we're going to move on to the triple Fallen of Albas. I am still playing three because I do believe that at three he is just at his best. If I'm going to be running uh, three branded fusions and I'm going to be running three Fallen of Albas. It's just how it's going to go every single time. Now for the Despia package it is going to be a pretty small package over here since I had to make room in this deck. I was actually running this at 46 cards before, but it turns out that, well, uh, 45, it's just where I prefer it for the sake of consistency, um, even though that, that extra card did make kind of a difference before. But three, Aluber, the Jester of Despia, he is going to be your main searcher, so that's going to be a pretty obvious choice, of course, and he is a really good card, obviously. Then we've got Double Tragedy over here. Um, I only like to run two just as before because I do feel like you really don't need three in this deck. Uh, it's not that it's going to clog up at three or anything like that. It's just that at two, it's already consistent enough. You, you will see it enough time. So I am pretty happy with having tragedy at two. And this time I am actually running ad libitum. I did read through the comments of the last deck profile, and I noticed that a lot of you guys did mention that ad libitum is better than Dramaturge overall. So I decided to give him a try, and I do really like him. I've actually gotten around learning exactly how to use him and when to use him. So I do like ad libitum certainly enough to include him instead of Dramaturge in this deck profile. Um, and that's just how it's going to go right now, since unfortunately I don't have room for Dramaturge at the moment, uh, as much as I like Dramaturge. So that's going to be it for the Despia package. Now for, for Beastial, we've actually got over here, double Beastial Lubellion. I was running him at three before, but I figured that at two, he's actually better, uh, because three copies does seem a little bit excessive for what he does. Uh, you may only use him once per duel, or really twice at most, so just having three isn't really necessary, even for the sake of drawing him, because it doesn't really matter ultimately. He is searchable through a variety of ways, so you, you really don't need to run three. And same honestly goes with Beastial Magnemut, which is uh, which over here I'm going to run two of. And he is already a searcher. He can search for Beastial Lubellian as it is, so you don't need to run three either. He's actually pretty good at two as it is. And then I run two Beastial Sassaronir. I was running Druid Swarm, and I have actually considered running one Druid Swarm and run one Sassaronir. Uh, but I do like the effect of being able to ditch um a bcl monster or perhaps um 
a branded spell or trap and just toss that in the graveyard. I do like that because I can just toss an opening down there and then make sure that I can protect my fusions in case of anything. So I do prefer Saranir. Uh, I wouldn't run him at anything more than two. And I do think that one is probably good enough, quite frankly. But so far, I have him at two. Still experimenting with that. Still playtesting with that. And then I've got one Light Hex Sealed Fusion. So this is going to be... Uh, for Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. I am still running Dragoon in this deck, uh, so I am going to continue to run the Light Hex Fusion because Dragoon is just busted. Then for Hand Traps, uh, I'm going to run Triple, Ghost Spell, and Haunted Mansions uh, because this can stop Called by the Grave and a bunch of other effects as well. This can also really stop a lot of BCO plays in case they try to quote unquote DD Crow your own cards. You can go ahead and, and protect your graveyard with Ghost Spell. And Beasted is an archetype that's being implemented in a lot of different strategies. So I would highly, highly suggest that you play Ghost Spell because I think she's going to be very useful this format. And then lastly for Hand Traps, I've just got Triple, uh, Ash Blossom, and Joyous Springs um, because she is incredibly good as always. Now that's going to be pretty much it for Monsters. Um, and now I'm going to move on to Spells and Traps. I do actually run spells and traps in here so that does also include traps so over here we've got double prosperity i do still run prosperity because i think prosperity always comes in clutch at the very least most of the time this card has been incredibly useful though it does conflict with the lure of darkness which i do also run in this deck but Prosperity doesn't often really clash with Allure of Darkness since you won't always have them together. You might not even need to use them to gather, really, or in the same turn, I should say. So so this is going to be good enough. I want to see Prosperity enough times that I would run two, but not enough that I would run three. Then I've got triple Super Polymerization because Super Polymerization is still incredibly broken. I'm so glad that it did not get hit in the last ban list and it is such a good card it has saved me from so many circumstances where fallen of albas on his own with his own effect probably wouldn't have been so effective because my opponent would have had a way of stopping it but they can't respond to super polymerization so super poly pretty much eliminates that risk entirely which is what makes this card so good just the fact that your opponent cannot respond and you can use your opponent's monsters too now i do run triple allure of darkness Allure of Darkness is almost always useful. It is just a great card to have around. I really like it. And for the branded package, I run triple branded opening over here. Um, I still keep this at three. I think that at three, is it's really perfect. I would not run it at two because it would feel like I would be at a loss without it. Then I've got triple branded fusion, of course. So this one's going to be pretty obvious. Um, now with this, I do like to dump Lubellion. But sometimes I like to dump... Um, Blazing Cartesia in order to be able to make Albion and then be able to do some other place from there because then I can add Blazing Cartesia back to my hand uh, from doing that at the end of, of the turn. So I do now think that Branded Fusion can accomplish even more in this deck with with Branded Despia in general. So I do really like this combination. And I decided to actually drop um, things down to just one Brandon and Red because I figured that uh, before I would hardly ever come across two and even now one just seems like the perfect number. I, I have only always used this card only once per duel essentially so I do prefer it at one and I did need to cut it anyway to make space for other cards as well as you've been able to tell my Beastid or Beastseal package is pretty small uh, but um, it is for a pretty good reason, I would say. Now, now Brandon and Red is still a fantastic card. It's just that I really only need one copy of it. Then I've got Branded Regained, of course, uh, for that Beasted support. The, this card definitely comes in handy very, very often because it does allow me to bring uh, to take back a banished monster that just got banished and then be able to draw one card from there. And its effect to be able to special summon BCL monsters as well is pretty useful, even though it doesn't really come up that often. I am still playtesting with this deck, so I do still have some more practicing of my own to do. 
Then I've got Branded Lost. This card is so incredibly useful in order to protect your fusions in particular, but it also lets you search for your only Branded Lost target, which is going to be Blazing Cartesia. And I've probably been overhyping that card quite a bit, but I do like it a lot. I think Cartesia is really good. Then I've got Despia Theater of the Branded. This field spell is incredibly helpful. I do not run the Fred for package as you can see, so having a polymerization or pseudo polymerization is still really handy to have around. I don't necessarily miss polymerization uh, or the Fright for Engine. Really, I didn't really like running it. it. It was just that it's good, but I don't like running certain cards in order to be able to make that work. And I needed to make a room for a lot of things in here anyway. So the theater stays. It's still very good. Now, lastly, for the traps, I've got Branded Retribution. Branded Beast and Branded Banishment. Branded Beast is actually my least favorite of the bunch, quite frankly, and it's the one that I am more likely to cut in favor of adding something else, if need be, because I would not want to go past 45 cards. I've already done this at 46 cards, and quite frankly, this is just what I prefer. Um, and yeah, I mean, I do like this build quite a bit, though there are some consistency issues with it. Um, it is still a very powerful deck, but I am still fine-tuning it, and this is so far what I have gone ahead and cooked up. So that's going to be pretty much everything for the main deck. Now we're going to move on to the extra deck. So over here, I've got Alba Linares, uh, the Abyss Dragon. He's going to be very useful, mostly for dumping it uh, for Mirror Jade's effect. So that's mostly why he is there and why he's going to stay around. I haven't really gone against a lot of Dragon Link uh, decks or anything like that, so I haven't had a lot of opportunities to use them in that way. But now that Beasted has been implemented in so many different decks, this will come in handy more often. And I've also got Red Eye Stark Dragoon, of course. Uh, Dragoon over here is here for the crazier plays, for the friskier plays. Then I've got Guardian Chimera. I only run one. I feel like I only need one because I don't run Polymerization. The protection effect isn't there. But I feel like you really want him for his first effect, which is to be able to, to, be able to draw and then pop. So I do like him, but I really only need one in the stack, honestly. So I just keep him at one. Double Mirror Jade. Two does come up fairly often, uh, but one is usually what you should expect to use. So that's honestly perfectly fine. One Lubellion, the Searing Dragon. I've never needed more than one because I end up just returning him to the extra deck regardless. Uh, so one is really just good enough for me. And it is better for being able to make more room in, in this deck for other cards. Uh, so double Albion is what I run here. Um, Albion is incredibly useful. Sometimes I do think about running three because this card is just that good. It's that good of of a searcher and it allows you to fuse instantly with it too upon summoning it um but i think that at two he's still pretty good but one is just too few so you, you definitely want at least two then i do run double masquerade with him you either make two or you don't make many uh any for the most part at least that's how i prefer to play it because i just feel like he's a lot more effective at two um so i do run two and when when i am capable of special summoning two fusion summoning two i will definitely go for that for that play like right off the bat because it means that your opponent has to respond to it or they have to burn for 1200 for every time that they want to activate a card effect which is very significant in the grand scheme of things now we got despian cortis uh this card is really good as well if it if, for example, I miss my chance to fuse for two Masquerade, then in that case, I would end up going for one one Despian Chorus instead, because that way I can use his effect in more than one way, which is pretty good. This time I am running Despian Priskinian, uh, because he can be a pretty good Super Poly uh, target as well, depending if you have like an Aluber or an Adlib on the field or, or something like that to be able to make this guy, or even even Chorus as well. But he is pretty powerful as it is. I don't make him all that often, but it is pretty nice to have him in the deck. Even though he's probably the one card that I would cut from this deck in order to in order to make space for something else if need be. Then I've got, of course, Drago Sibelia. You have to run this deck with Drago Sibelia. This card is just really good. One Garura, which is going to be a fantastic super polymerization target. So you would always want to go for that. And you've got Dark at the Dark Charmer. So I've limited it to only one link. 
in this deck. I don't run any synchros or XZs like I was in my previous build. And honestly, I really like it. He doesn't come up too often, but when he does come up, he definitely steals the show. So I, I enjoy running him, and he's going to stay in this deck probably for a good while. Now, moving on to the side deck, which has actually received quite a few changes. Now, I am still running triple Nibiru because I do think that Nibiru is incredibly useful still for decks that will spam at least uh, five summons per turn. This this guy is just going to save you very often. Then I've got Deck Devastation Virus to deal with monsters. Of course, it is going to be especially useful with Sprite, for example. And I've got Triple Eradicator Epidemic Virus too. So I am running the virus package over here, as I'm going to call it. I run Triple Dimensional Barrier because this card can also very much come in handy, especially if you're going against a deck that's very extra deck heavy but it doesn't help against links so that's going to be kind of unfortunate but right now this format is very heavy on just about everything else especially fusions so this is still going to be a very good card to run uh in case of anything and honestly all of these would be fantastic side deck choices in case of anything and then there's going to be triple skill drain which is probably the card that i would side deck in the least because I find that the other ones are just more immediately useful. But Skill Drain, still, in case I feel like I need it, it is there. And that is going to be everything for my side deck. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this deck profile. And if you did, please make sure to leave any kind of suggestions and thoughts in the comments. Because I, I do very much appreciate that. And of course, any kind of feedback is always important to receive. Um, not to mention that if you did like it, of course, let me know uh, by liking this video because that does help me in the algorithm as well. So thank you so much. And until next time, this has been Francisco Ferreira Vlogs, and I will be seeing you hopefully with another deck profile at some point soon. So enjoy.